uh, the presenters for Aui Mai Aui Atu, affiliating Ngātiawa, Te Whānau a Te Harawaka, Te Wakatoia, Te Rarawa, Ngai Tu Oi, America, and Aotearoa. Fuu, I even chucked the old America in there. Ko te waka papa, te waka papa. And represented Opu Kairanga O, Tō Unga Raranga, uh, Tō Unga Toi Kupu, Kairanga O Moana, the research group, <coughs> weavers, creatives, and the Wano of o, o Iwa Harbour. Uh, Atui mai, Atui atu, ara mai ki te atamira. Tēnā tātou kato, rauranga tira mākou a tāi mai nei, uh, anō ngā mihi ki a koutou. I'm looking at, um, already I'm going off my time, I'm looking here at our, our kui and kaumātua sitting here just beaming at me, you might make me cry, but I am presenting on behalf of our whānau and uh, for you, our whānau, this is for you. So, um, oh yeah, I'm not going to look at you. So, oh, aroha mai. Our co-developed and co-implemented project is called Afi Mai Afi Atu, Embrace Here, Embrace Here, to Embrace There. And uh, it is located in Ohiwa Harbour, the centre of our world in the Eastern Bay of Plenty. Wait. I broke it. Oh, no, I didn't. Uh, Ohiwa, like many harbours and estuaries around the Motu, was once recognised as a prolific mahinga kai, or food harvesting area with such variety and abundance of food that it required little to no effort to harvest. In 2007, we had one mussel bed that was a continuous two, nearly two kilometres reef with an estimated 112 million mussels. Fast forward to 2019 and just eight, under 80,000 mussels remained in the whole of our harbour. Um, and with only one of the four traditional mussel beds left. But we had these guys. Pa Tangaro, who you were introduced to yesterday with Matt Miller and Matt Cumming, um, the 11 arm sea star. In 2009, we had an estimated 672 tonnes, or 1.2 million of these critters um, in a mussel bed. And then in 2019, we had an estimated 100,000 sea stars in a two hectare pippy bed. 15 individual critters is considered a balanced number. We had 50,000 per hectare. The question is though, if we all talk about kaitiaki tanga and hunga tiaki is, what are we gonna do about it? So, I forgot to turn. Um, for us, everything we do is prioritised by Matauranga. I just saw Fire Roka hit Gary and go, hey, that's us, baby, um, by working with our co Matua, such as Charlie Blewett, Fire Roka, Hurihe Ngarimu Cameron, and Kiri Cameron. Uh, everything we do goes through our whānau, every level, every stage, because nobody, nobody wants to get a growling from auntie. Uh, Roka, this is for you. We also worked with our fire, with um, our tohunga raranga, our master weaver, Roka Hurihe Ngarimu Cameron and Kerry Cameron, who went hours collecting pirita and cooking us the best kai ever at the marae. Um, to help us create natural resource muscle spat lines, or tauru made out of, made out of tikoka bio waste and other natural materials. We hung them in the harbour along with industry spat lines to see if we could grow our own baby mussels. And it worked. We have successfully created mussels for three consecutive, regenerated or recruited three consecutive years, 2019 to 2021. Oh wait, a lie, four years. Because we have a new batch of baby mussels this summer just come. Um, when, Toto, when we deployed our Toto Kuku, we, um, we followed, I guess going on what Tana was talking about this morning, we didn't have a set day or time or even month. What we did was we, and we didn't dip them. Uh, industry 
uh, commercial industry, aquaculture, they dip the mussels to keep other organisms from growing on them. We didn't do that. We just had a karakia, paid attention to what was happening in our harbour, what birds were arriving, what flowers were flowering, how was the wind feeling, and most importantly, how did our puku feel? If our puku felt right, we had karakia, we all got on the boat, and then we deployed our lines. More good news. At the same time, we worked with Ngāti Awa to map our taonga shellfish in the western side of Ohiwa Harbour. We know the distribution, abundance and sizing of our taonga shellfish. You'll see on the graph below that I've actually covered up what all those colours mean, because you know, I don't need to tell you why. Because we don't want you to know, but we want you to know. <laughs> So what I can tell you is that our, one of our PhD students, Kitty Dehana, who I can't see right now, but I know she's hiding from me, um, she worked very hard and she um, surveyed 44 hectares, equivalent of 44 rugby fields, to find us uh, just under 5 million tuangi or cockles in our estuary. She also discovered what we thought was a long extinct bed of titiko of just under 4,000. Then our dive team went down and we know that we have 19 hectares of pipi, that we have about 20 horse mussels live, living in our estuary and around 300 scallops in our estuary. Great news for our people to make decisions. Led by Rich Bulma in collaboration with Project 3.2, Joanne Ellis and Fabrice Stevenson, we also a range of, we collected a range of cultural and ecological data excuse me, of the mussels and the sea stars, along with biophysical currents, depth and sediment characteristics of the harbour over many, many months. The, the information was used to develop uh, flexible modelling tools to help our people make decisions for our taonga, our harbour and ourselves. What about those sea stars though? Our other PhD student, Megan Ranopia, trialled three different removal techniques which included diver removal, trapping, and a combination of trapping and diver removal. Megan generated some very exciting new information in her research. Unfortunately, we can't share that because she's still writing it up. But what I can tell you is that she has also developed a starfish management action plan for the harbour, which was accepted unanimously by the co-management forum two weeks ago, a major massive achievement for a PhD student. Her work will now become business as usual in the annual management plan, or annual work plan of the regional council. I have to go fast because I've got someone better than me coming up. So um, yesterday, Matt Miller and them talked about our sea stars. We can't momo them. So he talked about our cream. We also are working with um, worm farms who want to trial them as feed. Mātauranga Māori and marine science working together. It can happen. And lastly, finally, is our taiohi. Everything is about succession. Everything from the our Māori. If we don't leave the world good, what's going to happen to our mokopuna? If we don't help our moka, mokopuna learn how to be get a better kaitiaki, what's going to happen to our moana? Equally as important, sorry I had to rush because this is the person you really want to hear. Um, equally as important are the ways that we share and disseminate knowledge. It is my absolute pleasure to invite Ati Tuhoe to the podium. Ati is a 2023 recipient of the prestigious Hone Tuwharia Tuwharia Writer in Residence, flash as, for poetry here in Te Whanganui Atara. And he, Ati, has written some poems around degradation and recovery um, in collaboration with 1.1 Ecological Responses to Cumulative Effects. <laughs> Hoi anō rā a tēnā tātou katoa e mene nei i tēnei ata Kā tika hoki te tautoko i nā mihi kua whakatoko tohi i mui a tātou Ki nā pakeke e noho nei i wāngia i a tātou i tēnei ata Ki nā mana o te whenua nei, ki tarana ki whānui Ki nā uri o Ngāti Toara Natira i mihi ana ki au kotou Nei mātou o Manuhiri Kei ko nei tātou e hura hura ana i nā au o Tangaroa meke me te tika hoki te mihi ki kia kura, ki tēnei whānau awhi mai awhi atu, ko rātau ki nga kaimahi o tēnei kaupapa nei noho ai te haramai ki te waha papa mo nga ue nei e nei mahi kua oti a rātau. Anyway, I'm Ati, I'm from Tūhoe. 
It's my pen name. It's not my real name. <coughs> so the IRD go and get me. But I'm, <laughs> I've been real privileged to uh, be invited along to come and, I don't know, come and join in on uh, this uh, amazing uh, mahi that Kura and the team are doing on Ohiwa. And uh, Ohiwa's a, you know, it's re real easy for writers to write about things that are easy and uh, that they love. So our environment, I'm from Tauruera. I don't have to flash words like my auntie Taina. <laughs> if you need to go and get a dictionary to learn the word, then you shouldn't use that word, I reckon. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, yeah, here I am. Hoi uh, Last week we went out with, first time I met uh, the team on the boat, we went out on Ohiwa and I wrote this poem where I had some geologists there from Waikato University and they're taking a core sample, I think it may be off Hokiang Island uh, in the harbour. And it's basically it's the whakapapa of uh, of Ohiwa, and it's all those base sedimentary layers, and uh, just all the words just came. So, and, they, <coughs> here, um, and I, the series of kupu that I'm creating uh, with this kaupapa, we're going to call them Hiruri Mo Ohiwa, and Hiruri are like love ditties, so they're like love poems to Ohiwa. He tai timu, he tai pari, he waiti, he waita, he awa, he repo, he fanga, e, e taku moane, e hora nei ko Ohiwa e. It's the incoming, it's the outgoing tide, it's the brackish and the salty waters, it's the tributaries, it's the wetlands that make this harbour who lays before us our ohiwa. He hōhonu, he pāpaku, he kirikiri, he one one, he anga, he uku, he paru, he puehu, he kōhatu, he tāhana o taku moane e hora nei ko ohiwa e. It's in the depths and in its shallows, it's in the sediments of sand, of soil, of shell, of clay, of mud, of dust, of pebbles, of basalt that lay beneath this harbour, our ohiwa. He mautere, ko hoki ana, ko ure tara, ko ohakana, ko motu o tū, ko whanga piko, 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 ko pā taua, he pari, he hiwi, he pā kāena, ko tauwhare, ko paparua, ko upokorehe, ko hiwarau, ko onekawa, he āhuru, he maru, he tumu, taku moane e hora nei, ko ohiwa e. It's the islands, Hokiana, Uretara, Ohakana, Motu Otu, it's Whangako, Piko Piko, it's the cliffs and the hills, it's the ancient Pā Taufare, Paparoa, Upokorehe, Hiwarau, it's Onekawa, it's a sanctuary, it's a security, it's what harbours us to this, it's what anchors us to this harbour that lays before us, our Ohiwa. He pōhusukawa, he kākaho, he raupo, he mānawa, he karamu, he naio, he wiwi, he rimurimu, e tī emi emi ana i nā wai o taku moane e hora nei ko ohiwa e. It's the pōhutukawa, it's the reeds, it's the rushes, it's the mangroves, it's the karamu, it's the naio, it's the sedges, it's the seaweed that sways in this harbour that lays before us, our ohiwa. He kōhanga, he rua, he kāinga, he mahina, he pātaka, he ohu kaimo nā uri o taku moane e hora nei ko ohiwa e. It's a nursery, it's a refuge, it's home, it's our lāra, it, it is constant and consistent so that we endure next to this harbour that lays before us our ohiwa. He kupuna, he hīnaki, he pauraka, he taruke, he pīhuka, he tao, he hei, he matau, he aho e hī nei nā wai o taku moane e hora nei ko ohiwa e. It's the net, it's the eel traps, it's the crane net, it's the crab pot, it's the gaff, it's the spear, it's the lure, it's the hook, it's the line that descends into this harbour that lays before us, our ohiwa. He mā tai tai, he tītiko, he pūpū, he kōkota, he pipi, he tuani, he pā tito tito, he tio, he tipa, he nia nia, he kuku, he takotoki taku moa nei hora nei ko ohiwa e. It's the shellfish, it's the periwinkle, it's the snails, it's the pippi, it's the cockles, it's the barnacles, it's the oysters, it's the scallops, it's the black and it's the green-lipped mussels dispersed across this harbour that lays before us, our ohiwa. He ururua, he manga, he kanai, he kahawai, he tāmure, he pātiki, he tūna, he ni oreore, he īnana, he kōkopu, he aua, ko mau tohora kai waho o taku moana e hora nei, ko ohiwa e. It's the hammerhead shark, it's the barracuda, it's the mullet, it's the kahawai, it's the snapper, it's the flounder, it's the white bait, it's the cockabilly, it's the sprat, it's the herrings, and it's way or island laying beyond the saba, our ohiwa. Ko nuku hau, ko uukai, ko wainui, ko kutarere, ko ruatuna, ko wai o tāne, ko awaraputuna, ko matekerepu, e whānai, taku moane, e hora nei, ko ohiwa e. 
it's niku hau, it's au kai, it's kutarere, it's rua tuna, it's wai o tāne, it's te awa rapu tuna, it's mate kirepu that feeds fresh water into this harbour that lays before us, our, our ohiwa. He atua, he tipua, he kaiwhakaora, he kaiwhakamate, he taurana, he kāina, takumua nei, hora nei, ko ohiwa i. She is godly, she is ancient, she is the giver and taker of life. She is safe harbour, she is home, this harbour that lays before us, our ohiwa. So I wrote that one um, yeah, based on the sediments that um, that crew from Waikato had brought, and uh, I thought, that's the whakapapa, so I just looked at what makes our harbour the harbour, and it's everything that lives in it, on it, and around it. So those were those words. I should have just done it in Māori, because kind of the English bit kind of bummed it out, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've got one more, this one's called Chi Glowed, and it's around the cuckoo that used to lie as a kid of a saint could go down, and, and when I was a kid, my uncle used to go down and scoop them up by the handfuls, by the armful, sorry. She once glowed with phosphorescent nia nia and cuckoo, gathered from the floor by the armful when the right tide was at dusk. Their tangled beards bioluminous clinging to each other, filtering changing tides that run over te tukinarai at the mouth of Ohiwa. The middens they left shine pippy white with purple fringes of tuani and cuckoo shells turned from green to white in the sun. Harbour and sanctuary and estuary and history and beauty and pātaka and mahine and tipuna and atua are all the labels we rub into her mud flats at low tide with our feet. We only scoop armfuls of the wrong type of luminous stars now. Starfish invaders, no longer bearded and green-lipped. And the incoming tide of greed and the runoff from someone else's farm will recede with the outgoing tide back across their tukingarai. And the silt needs to clear from the turbid waters that our pollution is hiding in. Kia ora tātou katoa. Kia ora.